Unlike other video game publishers, which tend to center their identity around a handful of properties, Sony and their PlayStation brand have always been a constant state of evolution. Heck, you can literally see their franchises start and stop on single generations. Which is why we turn to you, dear viewer, and ask, which PlayStation Classic needs a remake and why? And it's obvious a lot of you have been waiting for your chance to answer this question, which is great. And speaking of PlayStations and chances, if you want the chance to win a PS5 Pro, then listen up. All you have to do is comment on a participating thread over on GameRant.com. We'll leave the link in the description to make it easier for you. Participants must be 18 years of age or older, premium GameRant members' comments are worth double, and newsletter subscribers will have opportunities to earn bonus entries. Contest ends on November 12, 2024 at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time, so make sure to head over to GameRant.com before then. And now, let's crack on with your answers. We're kicking things off with Nathan, who recently played the superb celebration of everything PlayStation, Astrobot. Quote, After playing Astrobot, I would love to see a remake of Ape Escape. That was really a fun platformer to me. I think it would help the younger market have some games and have games I can play with my son. I'm sure you could add a whole slew of new features that maximize the DualSense controller. End quote. And Nathan, if you're asking me personally, if I want to go around and hunt some silly apes, you're darn right I do. Ape Escape is the Sony franchise that burned brightly and briefly, but it was most notable, at least initially, for its unique controls, which plays movies on the left analog stick and combat swinging on the right analog stick. Was this all just a gimmick to sell the original dual analog controller? You're darn right it was, but this breezy time travel adventure with killer drum and bass tracks still plays great to this day. And throw in those aforementioned dual sense gimmicks and we'll be in banana heaven before we know it. Up next is, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but they have a darn good point. Quote, Bloodborne. I know it has already been said quite a lot, but I just can't fathom how one of the best PlayStation titles, considered top of the Souls genre and loved by fans all over the world, is still limited to the PS4 30 frames per second. The depressing gothic atmosphere of grotesque reality filled to the brim with abhorrent eldritch abominations is easily one of my personal favorite games of all time. With its fast-paced combat, the many innovative mechanics that push past the standard Dark Souls combat, the horror elements, the blood effects coating your garb as you slaughter your Way through the infected streets of Yarnum, and the top tier music firmly established Bloodborne as one of the games of all time and in desperate need for a remake. Imagine all this with new gen graphics, just like Demon Souls, perfected combat animations, and even more thrilling and immersive atmosphere. End quote. I don't think you'll find anyone here who disagrees with you, um, friend. In fact, it seems each and every year, more and more people are diving into Bloodborne for the first time. Fans call the series Soulsborne, in reference to the other and much more prevalent series Demon Souls and Dark Souls. There's only one Bloodborne, and yet it gets a name check for the whole genre. That's how near and dear it is to the fanbase. Where you may find a bit of contention is the idea to use Demon Souls Remake as a reference. Some folks enjoy the Bluepoint remake, others see it as a watered-down visual experience. If Bloodborne were to get a remake, we're sure those changes would face a lot more scrutiny. So if there is a remake coming, let's hope it's coming from From Software, just to keep the diehards happy. Eric answers with a dark horse, and yes, we selected this answer because it's original and interesting. So let that be a reminder, it's not a popularity contest. Quote, going outside the box with a game that never had a sequel and hasn't been rebooted or remastered at all. Future Cop LAPD. The game modes were both fun. A current gen game along for larger online battles would be amazing. The 1v1 fights in the original required a ton of strategy and could go for a while. Underrated game. Bring it back. End quote. Is Eric right? Personally, I have no idea. I have no recollection of playing Future Cop LAPD. But within five seconds of looking this game up, I immediately thought, wow, that sure looks like those old EA Strike games with the helicopter. And wouldn't you know who won the pony? Turns out Future Cop LAPD is considered a spinoff of that series. For those of you not in the know, the Strike games feel like a real-time strategy game, but with the agency to control one character or vehicle. Plus, it was one of the only series in all of video games that let you attack the White House. There's probably a good reason most games don't do that. Up next is Jamel with a great answer, quote, I would most like to see a Final Fantasy VIII remake. I think the game has great characters and a great story, but a lot of elements haven't aged well. I found the junction system to be pretty inaccessible, and it made it more difficult to enjoy the game. So if they could find a way to overhaul that, it would help a lot of people truly experience how awesome FF8 can be. There are many locations and battles in the game that would be absolutely gorgeous with modern graphics." End quote. Again, love the answer, Jamel, although I'll say it wasn't time that caused the elements to age poorly. They were always pretty 
pretty clunky. Folks going from Final Fantasy VII to Final Fantasy VIII either embraced the overcomplexity as part of FF8's more mature story and character design, or bailed after the first 20 hours because of the junction system. It's become a meme at this point, but Jamal's answer is great because it fixes a game to make it more enjoyable for everyone. Final Fantasy VIII has one heck of a story, and a standalone remake that optimizes the combat and leveling system is all it would take to open it up. Up next is Alan with an audacious answer. We need a full remake of Castlevania Symphony of the Night, the original Metroidvania game, but with better VO lines and a port for all platforms. End quote. I'm really split on this one, Alan. On the one hand, I have tried unsuccessfully for years to convince many people to play Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Maybe a remake would finally persuade more players to give this classic a shot. But on the other hand, this game is essentially perfect as it is. And we know this because Konami has essentially tried to fix the game in the past with the PSP port and the Castlevania Requiem Collection. These versions updated voiceovers and included Maria as a playable character from the Saturn version. And yet, personally speaking, I boot up my Xbox to play the backwards compatible and PS1 accurate port. Either way, Alan, everyone watching this needs to play Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Yes, that includes you. Benjamin offers up another fan favorite, quote, Twisted Metal. RPGs, FPS games are all continued to this day, but nothing exists like Twisted Metal but Twisted Metal. There is the exception of Vigilante 8, but I love that game too. End quote. And I'll just add Anthony's suggestion of Rogue Trip Vacation 2012 to that list of car combat. And really, that's what the genre is. A free-roaming competition featuring vehicles with missiles and bullets. But under the hood, the game operates more like Street Fighter 2 or Mortal Kombat, with secret button combos allowing players to fire homing ice or jump to a different level. The team always considered the game a branch of fighting games, not racing games. With an entire live-action adaptation streaming series, a well-received one at that, you would assume Twitter Twisted Metal would be given another shot, but we're still waiting. Up next is Haggy51 with a hot take, quote, Shadow of the Colossus needs a full remake to fix the horrible gameplay that persists on the PlayStation 4 version. The story and graphics are still amazing after all this time, but frankly the wonky controls make it virtually unplayable in my opinion, end quote. And Haggy51, I want to personally thank you for posting this, because that's exactly what I've been saying for years. Shadow of the Colossus was pushing the PS2 as far as it could go, and then often sacrificed standard elements in support of that grandiose vision. At the time, it was aspirational, but when copied verbatim on a much more capable platform, I frankly didn't find it particularly interesting or good. The gameplay does not need to be Call of Duty at 120 frames per second with the boy sliding around no scoping 360 a Colossi, but the current stamina system is so rudimentary it actively distracts from the presentation. Heck, I would say cut out most of the colossi, make the game four hours long, but what do I know? Up next is Aiden who reminds us of a PlayStation original, quote, Legend of Dragoon. A remake would reinvigorate the game's narrative, updating its mechanics and visuals for contemporary audiences. Though timeless, beneath LOD's dated exterior lies a rich detailed world with complex characters, an engaging story, and addictive combat. By remaking this classic, developers could give a modern makeover and make combat sleeker and graphics sharper. LOD 100% needs and deserves a remake, end quote. A great answer, Aiden, and one that comes up periodically. During the heyday of the JRPGs in the West, Sony attempted to join the party with Legend of Dragoon, but being a standalone title and coming from Sony, it's acquired a lot of attention as a bit of a curio. In fact, the game's director left the industry afterwards and has been working in IT security for years, making this the only game he ever Directed, but this has only built the game's reputation for those seeking something nostalgic but original. I'll say it's unlikely it'll happen, but it should. Up next is Francisco. Quote, Crap of the Rapper. The music is always catchy, and it can be reintroduced to those who don't know the music game that came before Guitar Hero and Rock Band. End quote. Absolutely no debate for me, Francisco. Parappa rules. Um Jammer Lammy rules. Vib Ribbon rules. Major Miner's Majestic March was terrible, but no one remembers that game. Pretty much everything Nana Anshan developed was pure gold and showcased the amazing power of CD-based consoles to give stereo audio on par with anything else available on the consumer level. Heck, why not give us a collection with a brand new pass at those audio timing cues? Listen, Sony, we've all got nice big TVs now. I darn well know I didn't miss that triangle on Cheap Cheap's cooking show. <clears throat> uh, moving on. Carl picked a popular answer. Quote, Vagrant Story. With old targeting combat, an option with on-the-fly combat would be Dream Remake. End quote. And this is another game that younger players may not have heard of, but Vagrant Story is one heck of a PlayStation classic that has a surprisingly enduring legacy with the region of Ilvalis. 
Now, the canon is never so straightforward, but this is the same name as the world from Final Fantasy XII and Final Fantasy Tactics. Vagrant Story still holds up rather well thanks to its pixel-dense characters, complex combat, and superb writing. Heck, why doesn't Square Enix just give us that Avalis collection? Vagrant Story, Tactics, and Final Fantasy XII Remastered all in one collection. Well, we can dream, can't we? And now is the most popular answer of the week. V-Wolf 2 said, Soul Reaver 1 and 2 are perfect candidates for a remake. I appreciate the remasters that are coming out, but these need full-on remakes. The world alone is worth revisiting and seeing rendered properly on a modern engine. The gameplay was ahead of its time, and the story is absolutely worth seeing played out in engine." End quote. You know, there was a time you couldn't enter a game store without seeing a cardboard cutout of Raziel. These days, that name doesn't even register with younger crowds. But for those of us old enough to dream of being a soul-eating skeleton with a boy band haircut, no game has ever quite replaced this intensely bizarre twist on the vampire. Heck, the first game still plays just about perfect. Perfectly. All right, we're just about out of time, so we're going to have to do rapid fire round. Up next is Thomas, who says Xeno Gears was one of the best JRPGs of all time. Killer Goop says I think a PlayStation classic that should get a remake is Jersey Devil. That game was awesome, and I have good memories of it. Scott says one of my old favorites I'd like to see a remake of is Dino Crisis. Oscar says the Sly Cooper trilogy. Nicholas says the X Files games. And lastly is Tony, who says I love Shadow Man the Part One for PlayStation One. It's the game that got me into it. So definitely. Shadow Man Part 1 Remake, please. I'm going to be honest, I don't think most of those are going to happen. That is, unless we keep the conversation going. So if any of these answers have sparked your interest, keep chatting in the threads below and let everyone know what PlayStation games you think deserve a remake. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week's Gamer Set. As always, we want to thank everyone who answered, so keep clicking around here on Game Rant, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody.